Hi there, my name's Guy, you're watching Midwinter Minis, and welcome back to the Speed Painting Hero Quest series. Now, get this, this video has been sponsored by one of the channel's Patreon supporters, Ben, the creator of 60 Mile Sky, but we'll chat more about that later. In this episode, we're gonna be painting up one of the big bosses, the Chaos Sorcerer, or Dread Sorcerer, if you're going by the new names. We'll be painting both the retro version and the modern version in this video. Now these are both spectacular sculpts in their own way, some of the best in the whole game in my opinion, but come on, this guy is just Skeletor with a different hat, right? I mean, that's pretty on the nose, even for Games Workshop, considering their illustrious track record of borrowing pop culture icons and selling them as their own. Anyway, let's just bite the bullet and paint them in the classic Skeletor colour scheme. Now you might be thinking, hey guy, how are you going to get that nice bright blue if you've only chosen a deep midnight blue for this project? And that's a great question, here's how. Just mix a little bit of that midnight blue into some off-white paint and ta-da, you've got an almost perfect colour without having to go out and buy yet another brand new paint. So adding a little water to make it go on really smoothly and on the 80s model, painting all of the tight bodysuit bits. On the newer version, it's a little bit less obvious which parts should be this lighter blue, but I reckon having the inner robe part painted this lighter colour, including the lining on the cuffs on the sleeves, as well as the cowl. Yeah, that should look pretty good. If you've gone quite thin on the paint like me, you might want to give them a quick second coat to make it a nice solid colour before you move on. And now let's pull out our deep purple paint, Royal Purple from Vallejo in this case, one of my favourite mini paints of all time, FYI. And using this, I'll paint the robes of the old model, just being a little bit careful where the lines touch the blue bodysuit we've already painted. We'll also paint his gloves, leaving out the spiky cuffs for now. And we'll also paint his boots. Man, I love the proportions on these old models. His hands are about twice the size of his feet. On the new model, pretty simple, just paint the rest of the robes. The only bit you might find a little bit tricky here is going to be the border on the cuffs. Now if you just tilt your brush a little bit and use the side rather than the pointy tip, you should find the shape of the model itself actually helps you out quite a lot here. If you accidentally spill over onto any of the light blue bits, just quickly touch them up while the paints are still wet on your palette, and it's also really important to make sure your camera focuses on your fingers instead of your model. The next colour for our spooky lads is some off-white bony paint for their faces, horns, skin and the little skull necklace on the old model too. Is... is that a baby skull? It certainly looks like it. Jesus, the hero quest Skeletor doesn't f*** around. Either that or he's been murdering a bunch of capuchin monkeys. Next up, let's grab some black paint. On the old model, let's paint this intercontinental championship belt. Paint the middle first, that's the easy part and then just carefully line your brush on the outside rim, being careful not to go over onto the purple. Let's also paint the cuffs under his gloves and also his helmet. Again, paint the main area of the helmet and then go in with the edge of your brush and just try to carefully catch the bits that border on the face. The neater you can be here, the easier things will be later. This is about as careful as we'll have to be for the whole project, to be honest. For the new model, there aren't many obvious parts to paint black, so let's keep things simple and paint his spooky staff. And let's also paint his twisted crown. I think maybe painting this jaggedy trim on the robe black would also be pretty badass. And it's also nice and raised, so it's easy to pick out just using the side of your brush. Now don't forget to paint these little pointy trim bits on the bottom of the robe too. Next up, let's grab some grey paint and tidy up any overspill we got on the bases themselves, which will also help to redefine the cape's edge. No metal elements painted on yet, because next up it's the dry brushing stage, and that would kind of just dull down the metallics anyway. Get a bit of off-white paint onto your palette, grab your preferred big brush, this is just a cheap makeup brush, dab 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 that paint around to work it into the bristles and then start wiping away all the paint on something absorbent or just on your palette if you're lazy like me and then when it looks like almost nothing is coming off move over onto your model and sweep your brush in gentle circular and side to side motions all over trying to softly add a little bit of lightness to the edges and textures Now let's unify all the previous layers, add a bit of recess shading, and make things look a bit more dungeon appropriate by adding an all over wash. 
I do this by mixing black and brown washes about half and half and then adding about the same amount of water to thin it down and make it less intense. So about one part black wash, one part brown wash and one part water. Now just slop this on all over your minis. Make sure everything's covered but be careful not to have too many big pooling areas because they'll dry with tide marks and look a bit ugly. Go have lunch or dinner or take your dog for a walk or something and then when you get back it should be nice and dry. If you want, you can add a little bit more wash to any areas you want to look darker in the recesses. I added a bit more to the bony mouths and eye sockets on the model's faces, for example. A quick black rim around the base edges to make them look nice and sharp. And then all that's left to do is paint the metallic elements. I mixed a bit of black into my silver paint to make it a bit deeper and darker and then painted the orb between the skeleton's horns and also his super goth bicep bangles. The modern sorcerer also has some bangles to pick out too, and once you've taken care of those, you've got two very serviceable little dudes ready to absolutely terrorise the heroes in your next game of Hero Quest. But we can make them look so, so much better for very little extra effort. We've done about 80% of the work here already. With just a few more layers, we can really make things pop. First though, remember I said this video was sponsored by one of the channel's Patreon supporters? Well, Ben just happens to be a game designer and is the author of the tabletop RPG called 60 Mile Sky. It's a sci-fi storytelling adventure game based on the really popular Powered by the Apocalypse game framework. Ben has filled a really good niche here actually because there are tons of these kind of games for fantasy but far fewer for sci-fi. 60 Mile Sky is a miniature agnostic game, so you can use whatever minis you like to represent your characters and enemies in the game, but rather than being limited to just skirmishes and gunfights, 60 Mile Sky is geared more towards telling fun, evolving stories over multiple game sessions. Think space operas like Star Wars, the space westerns like Firefly, and the comedy thriller aspect of Cowboy Bebop, for example. I've been poring over the new rulebook, and from what I can see, you get really interesting results on every roll, so there's consequences to every phase and each type of success moves things forwards in different compelling ways. And if things turn into firefights, they can get very deadly very fast. And while the game obviously caters for that, there are more ways to progress than just by hitting stuff. Anyway, here's the pitch. He's currently running a Kickstarter for its expansion, 60 Mile Sky, The Two Body Problem, and it's in its final 24 hours, so the perfect time to get involved. Honestly, I feel way happier giving an independent game creator 20 quid for a rule book than giving a giant corporation almost 40 pound for a book that will go out of date in six months. Follow the link in the video description if you want to check it out. And you never know, you might be playing 60 Mile Sky on your next game night. Now if you're dead set on Hero Quest though, let's show you how to make these sorcerers really pop. That wash and dry brush stage has knocked some of the saturation off the purple especially, so let's bring it back while also adding some highlights too. Mix your purple with a little bit of off-white to make a slightly lighter colour than the base tone. Not too bright though. And this is where the dry brush stage actually helps out loads because you can use all of the lighter areas as a guide of where to place your highlights. You can also use little sketchy motions to hint at some fabric texture. I mean, it looks better already, right? I added a tiny bit more off-white into the mix and then added another layer of highlights. Just little sketchy touches again, but only in a few select areas, imagining where the light would hit the models most if it was illuminated from above. So on Skeletor's impressive pecs, this curvy booty, and the wrinkles on the wizard's sleeve. And then basically do the same, but with blue this time. So adding even more off-white than you did before to that dark blue, and start sketching and stippling on little highlights all over where the off-white dry brushing caught the texture. There's loads of rippling muscles on stupid sexy Skeletor's bodysuit you can pick out, and you can also add some highlights near the outside edge of the sorcerer's sleeve lining to make it look like it gets darker the deeper it goes in. To reinforce the black of the trim, I thinned down some black paint to almost a wash consistency, maybe more of a glaze, and then just painted that onto the big flat areas of the trim, leaving the highlighted edges alone. Just knocking back the dustiness of the flat areas, really. Same for the staff, making the pole a little bit darker than the spiky twisty bits. And then we can also do Skeletor's helmet as well, leaving the lighter edges alone. Now, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but apart from some blood effects, I've been absolutely avoiding using red on all the enemies and monsters in this series. I'm saving it for the heroes to make them look obviously different from the baddies, but let's treat this sorcerer to a little red gem in his twisty crown. 
a tiny bit of off-white paint mixed into that red just to add a tiny highlight near the top of the gem. It's teeny tiny, so let's not worry about going crazy here. Also, saving one of the fiddliest parts for the end, let's give the sorcerer's fancy necklaces a coat of silver paint. Just use whatever small brush you feel most comfortable with, take your time, and just use the tip to carefully draw the paint over the texture of the jewellery. It is quite pronounced, so hopefully you'll find it easier to do than this looks. We'll also paint these spikes on Skeletor's cuffs too. And hey, let's complete the trio of skulls by overbrushing some silver onto the title belt as well. Now, almost there, just three things left to do. First, we're going to use the pure off-white paint to add a few highlights to the bones and skin, a little touch here and there, focusing on the edges of things like eye sockets, the brow of the nose, individual teeth if you can be bothered, the top edges of the hand segments here, the top facing knuckles on the fingers, stuff like that will really help lift the paint job. Now we'll add some black wash to the newly painted on metallic parts, and you can also add this to line any areas that are lacking a bit of contrast. I added a little line to the creases on the sorcerer's hands, and also between some of the purple and blue parts to make them separate a bit more. Now finally, as with all my other Hero Quest minis, I give them a light coat of matte varnish to help preserve the paint jobs. I'm not going to be super precious with this set, and I fully intend to play it with my kids once they're old enough. And even though they've only just turned three, you better believe I'm already teaching them how to read dice numbers. One! Very good! Got two! You got... Wow! Well done, darling! And I got one! Amazing! Let, let me try again. Okay. Dad, that one is yours! Two! No, <laughs> that's a five! And that's it. Sorcerer's done. If you've been following along, we've only got the gargoyle and the hero still to paint. If you've enjoyed this video or found the series useful so far, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing if you don't want to miss future episodes. If you really loved it, maybe you'd like to support the channel on Patreon. It's thanks to the generosity of awesome hobbyists just like you that help us do this full time, making fun, useful hobby videos for everyone in the community to enjoy. Now maybe you'd prefer something physical in exchange for your hard-earned cash? Well, we've got you covered too, with a merch store full of awesome stuff like t-shirts, stickers and art prints. We prepare and pack them ourselves and we ship worldwide. Also, massive thanks to Ben for supporting us on this video. Not gonna lie, it's a big gamble for a solo game creator to do something like this. So please do me a favour and go check out that link, the 60 Mile Sky Kickstarter, if you like the idea of a more immersive story-based sci-fi gaming experience. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.